Welcome back to the Giant Monster Games 2017 Advent Calendar, where I go through and play every single deck that has ever been put up on the channel, going from the least popular to the most popular. We're on day number five, and that means we are playing still a deck that is not very popular, but this is actually the most popular deck on the channel by view. So this has been viewed the most times, people search this deck the most, and that is Mono Black Control. That's right. This deck, almost everyone on the channel has seen because a lot of people, I would say a good 40% of the people that come to the channel, come through this video. So, for the 50% of you that may not know what this deck is doing, it is doing three different things. The first thing it's doing is destroying our opponent's hand using cards like Duress and Inquisition of Kozilect. Usually we're removing non-creature cards out of their hand because we can't deal with them as well, so removing artifacts that we can't deal with, removing enchantments we can't deal with, and a lot of times removing cards that we can't deal with, such as Storm cards. The second part of the deck is creature removal. So we're using stuff like Victim of Night and Dismember to kill creatures as they come into play because we just don't want to have to deal with creatures in play so we can, don't have to block, we don't have to deal with them. We're just going to remove them as fast as humanly possible. Both these cards are killing creatures and that is basically what we need to do with them. And then the last thing is we have some huge win conditions such as Desecration Demon and Vampire Nighthawk which we're swinging in to get the win. So this deck is kind of trying to do a little bit of all of these things so we can just pin our opponent down and then swing in and do some damage. Damage. If you are interested in seeing this entire deck and or the original deck because this is actually the upgraded version because this was the first ever deck tech revisited we did on the channel. So if you want to go take a look at those there is a link up in the top right hand corner up there with a playlist that has all of the videos plus all of the gameplay because there's a ton of gameplay for this video as well. And there's also a link in the video description below if you want to pick this deck up for MTGO. It helps the channel out and allows me to make videos just like this for you guys. Okay let's get into it showing you guys some gameplay throwing it over to gameplay. Adrian and we are off we are on the draw and so if we're on the draw what do I think of this opening hand we yeah, mm -hmm. it's not amazing but I think it is keepable mostly because we can inquisition and or duress uh, right away here so we'll probably inquisition straight away it looks like we are playing against no I was gonna say it looks like we're playing against elves but I don't think that's the case we're playing against something else something else entirely it just has elves in it. It's a uh, because elves. At least I've never. I haven't seen an elves deck right now that is a uh, green white elves deck. Uh, uh, green black, yeah, sure, but green white, not so much. Uh, well, let's inquisition our our uh, our friend here and uh, let's see what he has going on. The answer is he is an elves deck. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm not sure why he's running white though. Uh, well, obviously we have to grab the arch druid. Can't have the arch druid. So I think we're a pretty good matchup for elves. This is a pretty good matchup for elves. Um, or we are we are well paired against elves because we're playing metal black control, which means we're just basically gonna kill everything on the table. Yeah. So our opponent is gonna play more elves, and we're gonna have to hold up the disfigure for something a little bit more juicy. Probably, and also we can use Duress next turn as well, so, which should be good. Um, what do we need to do with Memoricide though? Name a card, we can easily name... Yeah, swamp, that is really not what we needed. Okay, so I think we're going to Disfigure the Dwyan's Elite. Do I, actually hold on, do I Disfigure the Dwyan's Elite or do I hold up for another Arch Druid or something like that? I think I need to hold up for another Arch Druid to be safe. In the meantime, we can also, you know, duress <laughs> and see what he actually has. Uh, so he has another... Hmm. So leave the Stampede obviously goes away. He has another... He's a uh, Elvis Mystic as hand. So, which is basically a letter where else. I kind of want to hold up the Disfigure for something that's going to matter. But at the same time, I kind of want to get rid of one of these guys because that's going to be damage every turn. We're going to hold it up. We're going to hold it up. Uh, we're just gonna have to take some damage. <laughs> we're just gonna take five damage this turn. So we need uh, we need creature control right now. It's one thing we don't have in our currently our situation right now. Ship it through to our opponent's turn. Our to our turn. Actually, hit five. Um, okay. Yes, we're gonna take five damage, which sucks. He should play the Mystic. There we go. There's the Mystic. And. Double Mystic, okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a thing that happens. Ghost Quarter, absolutely not what we needed. Um, not even in the slightest. Uh, yeah, well, okay. Um, I think what it's going to be is we're going to disfigure something on the end, our opponent's end step, no matter what. No matter what. 
What we need to do as well is we should uh, Memoricide for... Um, oh, straight to combat for our opponent. That's interesting. Um, so we are going to disfigure this guy. Might as well stop the two damage coming in. At least we're still taking five, but not taking an extra two. And what we need to do is we need to Memoricide for Azuri Renegade Leader. Is the big one right now that I know that we can't deal with. Hopefully we'll get some creature removal. Do we get creature removal? Victim of the Night technically is creature removal. Uh, yes. So... What do I do? I think the Desecration Demon is going to be the first order of business because I'm going to start chump blocking stuff. And then, once we've now, now that we're chump blocking stuff, we can like slowly grind him down. Even though I think he might be able to kill us faster than we can kill him. We'll see. Uh, and if he swings with everything, it's going to be 5 damage. Swings with everything again, it's going to be 4 damage. Mind you, we can Memoricide to get rid of one of these things. So, our clock is pretty, uh, pretty, <laughs> his clock, for us, is pretty fast. Uh, collected company. Hmm. Surprised he didn't do that on, oh no, yeah, I guess he'd do it, yeah, um, no, surprised, why wouldn't he, why wouldn't he do that on, on our turn? If I collect a company's instant, you should be instancing on, on our turn, on your opponent's turn, so, it's kind of a weird play on our opponent, maybe he's looking for something specific, I'm not sure, visionary is something, Dwayne's elite is also something, they're not bad, but, again, he could have done that on our turn, I guess the one thing about if he did get into the visionary, he's gonna draw a card. Uh, so that's nice for him. We need board wipe. <laughs> I don't think we have. I think we have one main board board, board wipe, which uh, is scary. And I don't think he's going to bother. Will he bother to sacrifice something? I think the answer is no. He's just going to swing in with everything. Or he should at least swing in with everything. Is he? Or is he going to hold up? Is he scared? He's scared. Why is he scared? I'm at 10 life. He literally can kill me in two turns. Okay, well, I will gladly take the the chivalrous act that he is proposing to us. Um, we'll play the Ghost Quarter. And I think we need to... What? Um, I think we memor aside for... Yeah, let's go like this. We're not gonna. Also, we're not gonna crack fresh, uh, uh, crack the ghost quarter for this guy because he doesn't have many lands already in his deck, and I don't want to thin his deck out anymore for him. So choose a non-land card, or yeah, choose a non, choose a non-land card. Uh, and I think we're gonna go with. So right now, I think it's the two options are either Elvish Arch Druid or Azuri Renegade Leader. Azuri Renegade Leader, I think is what we're going to go with. Okay. There's four. Look at them. All of them. On all of these gone. The reason why we're doing this, by the way, so you guys, if you guys don't know what Azuri, Azuri Renegade Leader does, he regenerates elves, which is scary. Plus, he also gives all of his elves plus three, plus three, and trample, which means even if we do jump block them, they still get through new damage. And everything else in here looks spell skite. That's kind of a surprising one. Okay, um, that's it. <laughs> and he has Court of Calling in his hand. Which means he's probably... Which means he could have actually just fetched up as a Renegade Leader next turn. Which is awesome and scary for him. I mean, good for him. That means he can go and fetch it up. Um, realistically, he'll probably go fetch up an Arch Druid this turn. And then we're dead. He'll probably do it... Uh, oh yeah, he'll actually do it right now. You'll actually do it right now. So we're dead. We're dead, guys. We're dead. It's okay. Um, we have a sideboard. There's Quarter Calling for three, which will be an Elvish Arch Druid. Um, so we have a lot of things to deal with this deck. This is not this is not a hard deck for us to deal with. There's an Elvish Arch Druid. Look at that. And we have no way of stopping all of this. Even if we wanted to. So we need to sideboard in some stuff to deal with elves. Which we have. We have to do we have stuff to deal with elves. Not the end of the world. Not even close to the end of the world. <laughs> That's not to swing it as our shoot. Yeah. That's okay. Go to sideboard. Let our opponent get the uh, the feel of, yeah, I won by killing you. And now it's time for us to sideboard in hate for 
um, the creatures. So, Mutilate comes in. For sure. Um, what else do we want? Extrapate is also a good one. It is a good one. Uh, Duress is less good in this case. Uh, I think at in this case, Duress comes out. We can still keep the Inquisitions. Hopefully use them to grab um, some of the bigger cards out of the graveyard. Uh, sudden Spoilings also needs to come in. And do I want Contaminated Ground? I don't think we want Contaminated Ground. I don't think we need it. Uh, things we can take out, though. Uh, Grey Merchant. Kind of 50-50 on you. Memoricide. I mean, Memoricide can be good, but it's a little bit slow. Especially when we're going to be putting in Mutilates. And we also have Extrapates we're putting in, which are a little bit faster. Nighthawk's got to stay in. Phyrexian Arena's... Phyrexian Arena is not a bad one, but we might want to take out a single Phyrexian Arena, I think. Yeah. Okay. And... Go for the ultimate price. Monocolor creature. Yeah, good. Okay. There we go. Run that back like that. I think that's the best choices there. Basically, throwing in some board wipe. Yes, we're going to play first. Throwing in some board wiper stuff. And... Oh, this is actually a pretty good opening hand. This is actually a very good opening hand. We are going to keep this. Mutilate is very good against elves. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end turn. For each swamp you control, usually by the time we're playing this, we have four swamps. You, sometimes more. And we also have double inquisition, so we can actually start getting some stuff out of our opponent's library. Library, I mean hand. Sorry. Um, ooh, look at that. Renegade leader, goodbye. Whoop. Ship it to our opponent's turn. There you go. Let's see if you can handle the mono black control this time, elves. You and your elving. Yes. I actually like playing elves. I'm not gonna lie. I actually really like playing elves. It's one of my favorite decks to actually play. And we're just gonna we're gonna Inquisition again. Might as well just kind of drain them of all the stuff. And it just looks like we're ooh Westvale Abbey, collected company. Uh, okay, well, uh, we'll get rid of Dwine's Elite. Ship it over. And I think what we'll probably do is uh, next turn, uh, assuming we don't draw another land, we are going to Victim of Night. This guy. Ooh, Devoted Druid. Does he, does he have an infinite mana combo in this deck? Maybe. He might have it. Would not be surprising. And he's going to swing in for one. Smart call. Smart call. Good idea for our opponent. Oh, land. Um, Kind of want to play this guy for his kicker cross to make him sacrifice one of his creatures. I think that's a good idea. Let's do that. Obviously, he's going to sacrifice the... Well... You'll probably sacrifice the um, the Lenoir Elves, which is fine. I'm okay with that. We're going to mainly focus on keeping him pinned down a little bit. So we're going to be able to get rid of this guy next turn, which is not the end of the world. It's actually very good, actually. I say not the end of the world, but actually it's very good for us. And then we can be forcing him to swing with this guy every single turn, keeping our opponent on his toes. And hopefully we'll be able to keep our opponent away from being able to actually do Westvale Abbey. It's going to be one of the big things for us. So, our opponent literally just plays land and passes. Well, that's a thing that happens once in a while. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to disfigure this guy. Getting rid of it. Killing it. And our opponent is going to, what, collect a company with him? Okay. That is okay. And then what? Archdruid. Ooh, and another Devote Druid. Okay, right, well, let's... Victim of Night, the Arch Druid. Which will then kill the Arch Druid, then kill this thing. Bam, bam. Chain Reaction, and then swing in with our Gatekeeper. Go to combat, swing in with the Gatekeeper. Ship it over to our opponent's turn. Hopefully we draw land. If we draw land, we can get the Desecration Demon to play, and we actually start getting some serious damage in. Which is the game plan of the deck. Desecration Demon tends to be quite good in the damage department. Uh, the only downside about Elves is if they, like, are generating enough Elves, they can, like, pay for his cost. Because what the thing is, he has an ability where, or he has a, uh, yeah, ability, I should say, where at the beginning of each upkeep, someone can sacrifice a creature. If that player does, if a player does, not any player, if a player does, uh, you have to tap this guy, put a one count on him. 
Oh, he's play another one. He keeps drawing all these guys. Well, that's funny. So yeah, so basically if your opponent has a like a token heavy deck or a creature heavy deck that they're just generating a lot of creatures, they can just basically keep Desecration Demon tapped down. Sweet. Uh, well, it's good combat. And we're going to hold up Memricide for later in the game if we need to keep it in a pinch. And I'm assuming our opponent's not going to block. I think they kind of want the mana. Desecration Demon. Get the, the fatty into play. And then ship it over. So we're looking pretty good in this situation. We're looking pretty good in this game. So we just need to... Yeah, the big thing about elves. When you're playing against elves, you're, if you're ever playing against elves, you just need to... I can always yield to this. I'm never, I'm never gonna pay for this. Um, you just need to be constantly putting enough pressure on them in the early game to get rid of, to get rid of their like, because elves, elves relies on getting a whole bunch of really small, quick stuff into play, and then using that to like ramp. Um, so let's just go like this, killing one of these guys. Again, just keeping things off the table. Killing, killing, killing then our opponent just can't get the momentum. So even if he plays an Arch Druid right now, the Arch Druid can only tap for two mana. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> My opponent decides to tap on tap. He's gonna, I bet he has a Court of Calling in his hand. Or something of the sort. What does he have? Oh, he's going to create an, oh, he's gonna create a token with uh, the Westvale Abbey. That's kind of fun. Why not, if the creature's gonna die anyways. Might as well. Alright, go to combat. Again, we're not paying for this ever. We are going to literally attack with all creatures. So that's six, seven, eight. Opponent either needs to... Well, he can't block the flyer, but... I mean, we're gonna swing in. Have fun with that. The one downside of Westvale Abbey for an, uh, for a uh, elves deck is it doesn't create elves, it creates humans. So, yeah doesn't really count towards a lot of the, or doesn't really get bonuses from a lot of the other things. Mind you, I guess you're never really using Westvale Abbey for its humans. You're using it to turn into like a 9-7 flyer lifelink indestructible haste creature, which is really the general idea for Westvale Abbey. And with elves, it's not that hard to do. I mean, if you can flood the board up, a whole bunch of stuff on the board, easy to do that. So, our opponent's turn to think. What do they want to do? They have one card in hand. I mean, that card could be anything. If it's a collected company, it's good. If it's a lead stampede, it could be good. But I'm assuming they would have played it by now if it was either of those two things. Going to combat. Hmm. Scary times for our opponent. Are they not actually deciding they want to do anything? Why did they do that? They paid the mana cost for Desecration Demon. I think they want to just let the game end next turn, I guess. I'm guessing. I... Maybe our opponent doesn't know how to play elves very well. Like this is the moment he should be kept tapping it down. Well, we're gonna swing it with everything. So attack with all creatures. Maybe our opponent was like, okay, I got it, I got it. We'll just let's see what else. Let's see what these things do. Which I guess happens. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Okay, go to sideboard again. I don't think we need to change anything in the sideboard, but let's just take a quick look. So again, Frexian Arena doesn't really make doesn't really help us at all. Memoricide is good. Desecration Demon stays in for sure. Uh, Grey Merchant is actually quite good in this matchup as well. Same as Unspoilings. Uh, I don't think there's anything that I'd want to change. Vile Blight is also really good, by the way. Vile Blight gives target creature, uh, minus three, minus three, and all other creatures with the same name as that as well. Which is fun. Very, very fun. Uh, I think that's it. it was, again, we're not, we're not changing anything, I don't think, in this set. Uh, it's... We're pretty controlly as it is. If anything, I could take out the Bajuka Bug, but I'd rather keep in the like a little bit higher mana base because we want to be able to play these things on curve rather than have to like wait two or three turns after. So yeah. And Dismember's also Dismember's good in this matchup. Usually we'll pay for it without having to pay life. Uh, Frexian Arena, Frex Arena is like the double-edged sword in this like matchup because. Mm -hmm. If we can keep our opponent pinned down fast enough, then we can start swinging in and dealing damage. If not, we kind of get into that scary zone where Phyrexian Arena might kill us. Um, and everything else in here is pretty good. Gets Verdict is probably like the weakest removal spell we have in here, but I'd rather Gets Verdict over Hero's Downfall. Hero's Downfall, if we were playing against a deck that had Planeswalkers, yeah, sure, we'd throw in Hero's Downfall, but we're not, so there's no point in putting in Hero's Downfall. And 
and yeah, we're just waiting on our opponent at this point. They're they're doing the sideboarding action. Okay, so we are on the draw. What do I think of this opening hand if we're on the draw? I think it's keepable. Inquisition first turn, Bile Blight basically, whatever he decides to play. Hopefully it'll be double Lenoir Elves or double Elvish Mystic. And Lenoir Elves, hopefully he has two of them, then we can Bile Blight both of them together. Which would make me very happy. Very, very happy. Uh, okay, Inquisition. Let's find out. Let's find out exactly what he has in his hand. This is also a really good card in this matchup. Ooh, he has the... Oh, Double Dwine Elite. Lead the Stampede. Spirit. Creatures you control get indestructible. That is fun. Uh, lead the Stampede goes away. Can't give him extra card draw. We have ways of removing everything else, so... Let's not do that. Uh, the problem with Dwine's Elite... Uh, if he plays Double Dwine's Elite, which he might this turn, next turn, then... Yeah, so we're going to have to hold up. We'll hold up and do Bio Blight on his second turn. So we're going to have to hold up double mana for it. Because he'll play Dwine's Elite again, a second Dwine's Elite, in theory. And then we'll just ultimate price both of them. Or Bio Blight both of them. Because Bio Blight's also instant, so <laughs> it's fun. Okay, going to our turn. I'm assuming. I'm not blocking. I don't have anything to block with. I'll take your one damage. And we will hold up Bio Blight. And if he doesn't play a second Dwine's Elite, we'll just ultimate price probably the Lenoir Elves. Probably could have should do a, uh, ultimate price the Lenoir Elves to go. Ew. Or we're going to kill this thing. So, go for the throat is going to be hitting this guy right now. Um, actually, we just go ultimate price. Bam. There you go. Goodbye, Elvish Arch Druid. You are one of the things that makes uh, the elf deck very strong. This is actually like the best card, or one of the best cards in the elf deck, because it's an elf lord, plus it gets mana for each elf you control. So if you would if I'd have left this in play, it's four mana. He gets four mana off that thing. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, there's the Dwine Elite and the Elvish Warrior swinging in. Sure, thanks. Thanks for that. And our turn, we get a Ghost Quarter. Um, Westvale Abbey is what? Sacrifice five creatures. Transform. You get to pay five as well. Pay five, sacrifice five creatures. So he's going to have, what, one, two, three mana. So we're nowhere near. We don't have to worry about that yet. We will, though, hold up for the Bile Blight on the next Dwight's Elite that's going to come down. This is a better bet. I'm assuming that's what he's going to do. Unless he draws into something better, he's going to probably just play the other Dwight's Elite. So, that's a smart call. So again, this is why you play creatures afterwards, because we could have, you know, Bioblighted before. But we'll take the four damage and assume he's going to play a second Dwight's Elite. We know he has a second one, so let's just wait for him to play it. Okay, so there's the second Dwight's Elite. So we're gonna, we took two extra damage. We could have technically got rid of Dwine's Elite here, but in exchange, we're actually gonna get rid of both of them for one card. So it's a trade-off. It's a trade-off, but I think we actually get value in the long run from it. And now we get to play a Desecration Demon, which will help us kill our opponent. And we also have a Gets Verdict, which is very fun. You know why it's fun? Because if he does manage to get a Westvale Abbey into play, we can always just get the verdict to make him sacrifice the Westvale Abbey creature. <laughs> uh, I should just let that happen. I should literally just let our opponent do that plan. Be like, oh yeah, we got the like indestructible. Oh, how does he deal with us now? And we're like, and sacrifice creature. Maybe we will do that. Depending on what he plays, maybe we will do that. Uh no. No. What we'll have to do instead is we're going to have to, we're gonna have to get rid of this guy. So, um, does our opponent swing in? He'll lose one of these guys. He might still swing in. He didn't tap it down either. Okay, well, we're going to have to go for Go for the Throat on that thing. Double gets Verdict. Ooh, that's exciting. So, go for the Throat on this guy. Might as well Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter and a black. Getting rid of the Arch Druid. And I think we just swing in. Uh, I'm going to always yield on this guy. Swing in, taking out Elves. There you go. Have fun with that. And... I mean, I don't really want to waste a Gets a Verdict on 1-1s. Yet, because it'll just... He'll just make one of these 1-1s into something. 
kind of want to hold it up for something a little bit more important. By by say I say this, but he's going to sacrifice tokens anyways. Is what I'm saying. So again, I kind of want to hold up Gets Verdict if he decides to do the Westville Abbey giant indestructible creature. Ideally. And what does our opponent decide he want to cast? He has enough mana. Oh, he doesn't have enough mana. He's one short, one mana short from Westvale Abbey plus two creatures. So that's a thing. I'm assuming he's going to swing in with. He doesn't. Why doesn't he swing in? Why wouldn't you swing in? Okay, well, it's a victim of night. Do I victim of night? Hold on. Victim of night's instant speed. Do I victim of night now? I think the answer is no. I think I victim of night on our opponent's turn. See if he wants to tap down this guy. He doesn't. So we're going to victim of night on our opponent's turn. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we have to get rid of this guy. We can't have 3-3 three, three creatures with trample. Oh, if he, actually, hold on. If he uses this... Um, which he has enough mana to. He'd have to use this guy as well. That would be what? Three, uh, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, is it other creatures or other creatures? Uh, this guy included. So it would be three. Uh, it would be four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He would. Uh, he actually has lethal on board, which is fun. Fun for our opponent. So we're going to victim of night this guy, and we're probably also going to get a verdict as well. Because why not? Okay, going to combat. And what does our... Um, I think we let them swing in. And then we'll blow up this guy once he swings in. Yeah, but we'll let him pay down everything first. So, let him, let him assume he's got it. Yes, go to blocks. No blockers from me. Our opponent pays the cost of Renegade Leader. Oh, wait, that's going to trigger it no matter what. <laughs> it's okay, we're going to now go like this <laughs> and destroy Renegade Leader. I forgot, these guys are still going to get buffed anyways. And we'll get the verdict at the same time. We should have killed them beforehand. That was actually a, that was actually a bad call on my part. That was a bad call on my part, guys. I'll admit it. That was that was me. That was me uh, not making the right choice. He's probably gonna sacrifice the yeah. So he's gonna get in for eight. But in theory, we should be able to take our opponent out this next turn. So yeah, I should have actually uh, no. So that was, a, that was a misplay on my part. Misplay on my part. I think though, unless he taps this guy down, we win. So we go in swinging for the damage here, and then we're going to play Gets Verdict again and deal one damage passively to our opponent's face. And uh, that's how the game is played <laughs> when you're playing against elves. So Gets Verdict, here you go opponent, you get a sacrifice creature and take one damage, which means we win against elves. Uh, I think that this is a newer elves player, I'm not going to lie. So <laughs> until next time, thanks for watching the Advent Calendar, and I'm Adrian, this is Giant Monster Games, and don't forget to game like a giant monster. Thanks for watching the Giant Monster Games Advent Calendar. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more videos just like it. A huge shout out to all of the Patreon supporters. You guys are helping make videos like this. And if you want to pick this deck up, there is a link below with an affiliate link so you can grab this entire deck on MTGO.